<laughs> David Alonso from the Center of Advanced Studies. And he met John while he was doing his postdoc here at the University of Michigan with Mercedes Pascual. And he's going to talk to us about will dietary shifts solve the current global, global environment? Thank you for the invitation. I'm not sure I'm gonna, I'm gonna be as amusing as the last video, but we will try. <laughs> let, let, me, let me just um, go to the first slide, to the so just to, just to say, you know, a little bit where I come from. So I, I work in this, in this uh, institution uh, in Spain, and I run Lancaster Theoretical Ecology and Computation. So Theoretical and Computation Ecology Lab. So, so uh, I, you know, I, I was very interested in, in, in Vanemia's uh, work while I was uh, here with, with Mercedes and uh, actually through through her, where is Mercedes, by the way? <laughs> and and uh, one thing I can say is that he accepts always always criticisms. And with Mercedes, we, we wrote some some uh, some comment on 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 a on a, a Van der Meer's papers. And you know, it's very difficult to get these comments uh, published. And and of course, because he accepts criticisms, so we got it published too. And and uh, and well, so what I'm gonna try. What we we're gonna try this. So the, there is there is some two, a, a couple of novelties in in this talk. So I've never given a talk with no equations. So, so that's gonna go. So that's the first the first uh, novelty. The second novelty is that I've never given a talk uh, like in a kind of dual dual thing. So, so actually, uh, uh, Patricia Social is gonna is gonna uh, take over and play the role also on some characters, as you will see uh, in the next slide. So we we are we are we are gonna talk about we are gonna talk about uh, the impacts of what we eat on the environment, and and we are gonna do it through these stories. So that's the second novelty. So so uh, and now. Um, Patrick is going to start with the first, the first story. So thank you for having me here and let me share my story. Uh, my name is Amy and I am coming from a family who traditionally is uh, a farming family. My, um, my, farming fam my farm has been family owned for generations. But through the years, a lot of changes have been uh, taking this farm into a big business, a big factory actually. And I'm running the, my, the cattle beef production. I took over my father. And then my older brother is uh, mm, he's trying to produce uh, chicken. Um, actually, you can have a lot of profit with chicken because, because it can also be ground up to feed fish. And my uh, older, my eldest brother is going to begin with uh, pot production. So through the years we have changed, we have seen a lot of changes and it seems that mass production is the norm and the goal right now. Um, my family is wealthy with this family, with this factory farming, but I'm not quite happy after all. So, um, you know, um, animal agriculture has a strong impact on the environment and we're gonna show just a, a summary of, of, this, of this impact in the, in the following uh, one and a half minute uh, video.
course, animal agriculture um, uh, requires land, energy, and water. And uh, these are strategic resources that are um, at, at the root of, of a lot of conflicts all around the world, as, 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 as we all um, are aware of. So one thing we could do is go and fish, right? Uh, and to tell the story, I, I'm gonna I, I'm, I'm gonna be like like Paul. So hello, I'm I'm Paul. <laughs> Last Sunday, I was fishing with my son. Uh, so he, he was very very excited. It was the first time he was fishing. He's only he's only five years old. And we were sitting there, no fish. I was getting sad. But those days, you know, when I was a child with my father, there was plenty of fish, you know, big fish. It was really great. But, you know, my family, actually, we, we, we live in a, in a, in a, in a, in a village, uh, and, and uh, my father was the last fisherman who owned his own boat. You know, then the big industry came in, uh, and, and uh, you know, for a small fisherman, was not was not business anymore. Uh, most people left the village, and luckily enough, my family turned his old house into a hotel. And I know, well, we are still well off, but the whole story about fishing, uh, it's it's a little bit sad. Well, um, as you know, uh, there is a lot of diversity in the oceans. And when it comes to the feed, the fish we eat, so it, 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 it gets kind of reduced to these four species, like uh, uh, cod, tuna, salmon, and, and shrimp. And uh, we are extracting uh, like 80, uh, um, um, 80 million uh, metric tons of fish every year. And this, the, this is the equivalent of... Um, uh, uh, China in, in human the, the, the biomass uh, of, of, of human weight equivalent to one China. So, and and and, and the devastation we cause when we uh, fish, when we drag the ocean for fish for fishing, is is tremendous. So, um, and of course this is only half of the story. By the way, when we, when we are focusing on these four species, there is a lot of bycatch. And, and this, this bycatch uh, can be used, for instance, uh, can be ground up and used to feed, to, to feed chicken. And, 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 and the chicken uh, uh, leftovers or wastes can be used also to feed fish that we can also farm. And that's, that's the, the, other, the other story. So we are farming. So uh, in, in, in the last like uh, 20, 30 years, uh, the amount of fish we can fish from the ocean so uh, has stabilized and has been substituted by, by fish farming. And actually, uh, it is nowadays the equivalent of one China too. So we are extracting two Chinas of fish uh, uh, every year. So, so um, and of course, we are doing it because uh, there is a market. Um, and um, so when, when we focus, for instance, on, on, on uh, farming shrimp, so th there is a, a, a tremendous problem in the, pr in the, in the, in the tropics with the, lo with, with the loads of millions of, of coastal mangroves uh, that uh, host a lot of diversity there. And it's not even an efficient process. Uh, to, 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 you know, to grow shrimp this way. Well, so that's the problem with a fish. So uh, how can, uh, of course, we, we, we can sort of, uh, we, we, we know that fish is, is, is good uh, for health. So uh, the famous uh, omega-3 profile and so on. But is that really true? Because you know, oceans has been polluted to the to the very large extent, and this is the focus of, of the next story. So, 
So um, Elizabeth is going to talk about us about the health impact of our eating choices. Um, last week, uh, Sarah, hi, I'm Elizabeth. Sarah came into my office and she was my patient. Three years ago, she was uh, hooked to this junk processed food, refined sugars and flours, um, chips, etc. kind of the standard American diet. So it is sad, but it's true that uh, the United States of America is the industrialized unhealthiest nation in the world. Uh, it is said by the National Institute of Diabetes and Kidney Disorders that two out of three United States Americans uh, are suffering from overweight or obesity, which, which leads to um, um, kidney disorders, coronary uh, diseases, etc. You can see here in the graphic the um, um, what is it? The, the result of the evolution of this uh, standard American diet. Uh, just recently, the World uh, Health Organization admitted that processed and um, red meat is uh, kind of the leading cause of all kind of cancers, colorectal, um, pancreatic, etc. Just to give you an example, 50 grams of red or processed meat per day can increase the risk in 20%. This is just kind of, um, okay, that, we don't have it, okay. That's just four strips of bacon or one hot dog a day. So, uh, on the other hand, we have a bunch of studies that uh, can relate fish to a lot of diseases. One of those is diabetes. So in these um, several studies, it has been found that 5% increase on the weekly uh, serving of fish increases the rate of, of having cancer. But that's just to make a, um, a, a correlation. Um, processed meat increases the risk of cancer in 20% by one serving per day. This is one serving per week, which means 35% of increase in cancer per day. So fish, even worse than red meat, why? Maybe the reason is due to the contaminants and pollutants, persistent organic pollutants, which has been dumped into our oceans for decades. Though maybe some of these chemicals have been banned, we cannot escape exposure. These are persistent organic pollutants. Okay. Another uh, linked with fish consumption was depression and eventually suicide. Several studies conducted in the long term um, has been linked this depression and eventual suicide risk <coughs> and increase to uh, whole fat diets uh, meat consumption, and also um, seafood intakes. Okay, but contrary to that, fruits, vegetables, beans, and legumes reduce this increase of suicide. So do you remember the patient, Sarah? She managed in three years to reduce her weight in 100 pounds, is off of her medications, and is pretty feeling excellent. You imagine why, right? Eating just whole plant food diet. So, the the we we are gonna be a little bit. We are gonna escape a little bit this story. This story is is about uh, what happens to people that get into the middle of the agro industry. You know, uh, it's a nun that was killed because was supporting local peasant, peasants in, in Brazil. And the next slide, you, you see that this happens uh, over and over again, precisely in, in Brazil. And it's uh, political ecology, and John Van Amia has written books on, on that. So, um, and uh, to bring our um, talk to an end, uh, we're gonna do like a little experiment. Uh, it's the, this is the story of Tom that uh, in order to be a little bit faster than just uh, 
uh, talking, you know, I'm, I'm going to read. But first, I'm going uh, uh, to ask you to close your eyes and try to recreate the landscape that I'm going to describe in this, in, this, in this story and, the, and, and what, 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 what happens in this story. So those ones to close um, your eyes. Uh, and I, I start. So it was a beautiful Sunday morning. Mary and her father uh, came out for a walk around the family farm. And suddenly, they heard something, something that sounded like a cry, some noises, some cries. <coughs> they came closer. And finally, behind some bushes, they discovered that helpless creature. Mary looked at her father. He understood immediately. OK, OK, we will take it home. We will see what your mother says. Years passed, and Tom grew up healthy and happy. He was a member of the family. Tom and Mary used to play every day, running in the nearby fields. But that Sunday was the saddest day in Mary's life. She woke up early. I went and went looking for Tom, but he had disappeared. Sundays, there was a farmer's market in the village. This year, the harvest had been very poor. Winter was coming, and Murray's father decided very reluctantly to sell Tom in order to, sem to make some extra money. Tom was the perfect age. He was strong and healthy. Surely, he could interest any owner of a neighboring farm. So that's the end of the story. So um, the question here is, uh, who of you uh, think of a um, human animal, or uh, who of you so think or thought about, uh, when I was reading it, that it could be just, um, uh, or you know, like, 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 like a, an animal? So that's that's the that's the, the point of raising that. Um, so I don't know if I if we can. So we, who, who thinks it was an an animal? Mm -hmm. Okay. So. So we present you, Tom. <laughs> so. So of course, uh, as as um, uh, uh, Peter Singer says. We should enlarge the circle of rights to embrace not only you know, humans of all kinds, but, but also animals that have uh, feelings that they care about their children and, 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 and that we can establish this empathy relationship with, with them. So with this, so we will, uh, we will uh, finish that in the end. So these complex relationships between, between different aspects that are involved in what we eat every day, uh, so, so yeah. everything is related especially to uh, our inability mm -hmm. to imagine a world that perhaps this is not true after, after uh, Catherine's uh, talk. We really can imagine a better world. And, and how can we live up to what we think and what we believe every day? It's actually our everyday challenge. So thank you. <laughs>